The Allen Temple AME youth team is requesting donations of small, individually wrapped candies for their upcoming Easter egg hunt. Please do not bring candies that contain peanut butter or peanut products. Candies can be brought in and dropped off on Sundays, March 17th and 24th. Drop-off bins are located in the foyer and across from the chapel. Allen Temple Woodstock is blessed to host the Sixth Station of the Cross on Palm Sunday, April 24th at 4 p.m. The guest proclaimer is Bishop A.J. Richardson, the Senior Bishop of the AME Church. The service will include the Sacrament of Baptism. If you have not been baptized and would like to be baptized, contact Reverend Pace or the church office by Tuesday, March 19th. You're invited to join us for a special Easter service at Allen Temple Church on Sunday, March 31st at 10 a.m. Bring your family and invite your friends and neighbors. We can't wait to worship with you and celebrate the risen Savior together. The Allen Temple youth ages 1 through 5th grade will have their Easter egg hunt Sunday following the worship service. Stay tuned for other fun Easter activities. Please remember your Easter baskets and come dressed in your Sunday best. There will also be a photo booth provided for the family pictures. On April 28th, join us after the worship service for a delicious meal and great fellowship in support of our pastor in the Focus 2024 campaign. The menu includes turkey sausage, bacon, shrimp and grits, quiche, biscuits, sweet rolls, and much more. The cost of the breakfast is $35 per person. Kids, toddlers through 12th grade eat free. You can purchase tickets on the church website. Remember to write campaign breakfast in the memo section. You may also purchase tickets in the foyer after the worship service. If you have any questions, please contact any member of the Focus 2024 campaign committee. Janice Pye, Shaquita McKenzie, Alzina Smith, Rubazine Whitlow, Sylvia Hawkins, Diane Moore, or Alan Lavender. We hope to see you there. The Allen Temple Lay Ministry invites you to attend sacred speech seminars hosted by the Connectional Lay Organization. These seminars purposes to enhance the engagement and interaction of congregation during the preaching or teaching experience. There are three one hour seminars remaining over the next three months. Please tune in to broaden your understanding of effectively delivering and responding to God's word. Links are provided in the e-bulletin. Attention Allen Temple graduating seniors and parents of graduating seniors. Do not miss this opportunity to earn money for college. The Allen Temple Church Golf Ministry 2024 scholarship criteria and other pertinent information are available on the Allen Temple website and in the e-bulletin. 12 scholarships totaling $10,500 will be awarded to those individuals best fulfilling the selection criteria. All application documents must be received by Saturday, March 30th, 2024. The nursery is available on Sundays during the worship service for children aged 1 to 5 years old. Kindergartners will also attend Children's Church. Our nursery team is eagerly waiting to serve your little ones. We're located in the four-year area. If you have any questions or needs, please contact Sister Cousin at C-A-R-I-S-A-L-Y-N 75 at AOL.com. Did you know that reading the Bible cover to cover can be increasingly beneficial and can enrich your life in many ways? Reading the entire Bible can deepen your relationship with God and expand your knowledge of Him. You can experience the complete plan of salvation from Genesis to Revelation and discern how God is leading you today. To assist in your commitment to reading the entire Bible in 2024, beginning Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024, a daily reading plan will be developed through the e-bulletin. Here's something to think about. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. If you've experienced the loss of a loved one, the Grief Share program is here to help. Each week's video presentation, group discussion, and devotional study help to bring hope and healing during this challenging time. Starting Tuesday, February 6, 2024, there will be a Zoom study every Tuesday until April 30th, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. 
The e-bulletin contains more information and a link to register. Join an Allen Temple Fellowship group where you'll come together monthly with other members to fellowship, laugh, and encourage each other. If you would like to join a group or want more information, please complete a fellowship group form by clicking the link in your e-bulletin or signing up at the Allen Temple webpage. These are today's featured announcements. Have a wonderfully blessed week. Greetings. My name is Dr. Joseph N. Cousins, Sr., the pastor here at Allen Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church, bringing you greetings and thanking you for coming to be with us this day. Whether you're worshiping with us in person or whether you're worshiping with us virtually, we're glad that God led you here today to be with us. Here at Allen Temple, we pride ourselves on being the church that's at your service. For we believe that God gives us four basic principles to teach, to go, to serve, and to grow that allow us to be of service to God's kingdom. First of all, we teach because we believe the Bible shows us that we must study to show ourselves approved, being those that are not ashamed to be able to effectively divide the word of truth. We go because as Jesus sent out uh, his disciples, Jesus sends out each and every one of us to go and to make disciples that the kingdom of God might continue to be edified. We serve because we believe that Jesus who is God and the son of God did not come to be served but came to serve and so we should serve and finally we grow when we do all of the other things when we teach when we go and when we serve god will allow us to grow because each day god will add to the number of those that are celebrating and fellowshipping here with us at allen temple and we have evidence of that because you are part of that number today and we pray that god would lead you to come on and join us and be a part of the ministry here at allen temple but until that time enjoy yourself celebrate with us and again we thank you for stopping by allen temple ame church of woodstock georgia the church that's at your service greetings my name is dr joseph n cousin senior the pastor here at allen temple african methodist episcopal church bringing you greetings and thanking you for coming to be with us this day whether you're worshiping with us in person or whether you're worshiping with us virtually we're glad that god led you here today to be with us here at allen temple we pride ourselves on being the church that's at your service for we believe that god gives us four basic principles to teach, to go, to serve, and to grow that allow us to be of service to God's kingdom. First of all, we teach because we believe the Bible shows us that we must study to show ourselves approved, being those that are not ashamed to be able to effectively divide the word of truth. We go because as Jesus sent out uh, his disciples, Jesus sends out each and every one of us to go and to make disciples that the kingdom of God might continue to be edified. We serve because we believe that Jesus who is God and the son of God did not come to be served but came to serve and so we should serve and finally we grow when we do all of the other things when we teach when we go and when we serve god will allow us to grow because each day god will add to the number of those that are celebrating and fellowshipping here with us at allen temple and we have evidence of that because you are part of that number today and we pray that god would lead you to come on and join us and be a part of the ministry here at allen temple but until that time enjoy yourself celebrate with us and again we thank you for stopping by allen temple ame church of woodstock georgia the church that's at your service greetings my name is Dr. Joseph N. Cousins, Sr., the pastor here at Allen Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church, bringing you greetings and thanking you for coming to be with us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, praise the Lord for another Palm Sunday. Praise the Lord for these beautiful young people who thought it not robbery to give service to God this morning. Or oh, won't you stand on your feet and worship with us this morning? Pray as we go to the Lord and ask him to pour his spirit upon us this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning thanking you for this very moment, Lord God. We thank you that we are here standing for one more Palm 
Palm Sunday. We thank you for this place of worship this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for the pastor who will bring us the word of God. Our ministers, Father, who take such good care of us, Lord God. We thank you for our families and travel and mercy. Oh, I'm grateful this morning, even for the sunshine this morning, Father. We ask you as we come to worship, open our hearts. We leave our troubles at the door this morning, Lord God. And we praise you in spirit and in truth. Our souls say amen, 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 and thank God. Thank you, Jesus.
Amen. Our call to worship as printed on our screen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord, we love your habitation. We love the place where your honor dwells. Let the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and all the earth sing his praises. You may be seated. We praise and celebrate the name of the Lord this day and welcome you to our services here at Allen Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church, Woodstock, Georgia. We thank you, thank you, thank you so very much um, and are grateful that you're here with us today. We celebrate Palm Sunday, the day in which the triumphal entry of uh, Jesus took place and he was going into Jerusalem and all of the people spread their cloaks and their garments on the ground and they were shouting Hosanna to the highest and they were all waving their palms. Come on, wave your palms wherever you are. They were all waving their palms and saying, Hallelujah to the highest, the King has come. Hosanna, the King is here. A day of celebration, a day of joy, and a day of jubilation. And we praise and celebrate the name of the Lord this day on this Palm Sunday, and thank you for joining us. For those that are watching us virtually, we thank you as well for coming out to be with us this day. Uh, it would not be the same without you. Just a few announcements today. Uh, first of all, want to remind everyone, if you are able to, uh, please, 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 Come back at four o'clock. Four o'clock today, we have a very special service with our presiding elder, uh, presiding elder Larry Hudson in the entire North Atlanta district of the Atlanta North Georgia Annual Conference. It's a very special service at four o'clock because our elder's going to be here, the district's going to be here, and it's really special because our senior bishop, the senior bishop of African Methodism, Bishop uh, Adam, Jefferson Richardson will be preaching this afternoon at four o'clock here at Allen Temple. We're gonna have the entirety of our district come and be with us, our elder be with us, the senior bishop is gonna be with us, and I would love for you to come back and be with us. So when service ends today, when you go home, don't take your clothes off. Look at your neighbor and say, don't take your clothes off. Because you know, you know, once, once we get comfortable, because to be honest, we're not coming back out again. So look at your neighbor and say, don't get comfortable today. Come on, look at your neighbor, don't come. Not today, not today, not today. Now, I, for one, um, understand as much as anybody else what today is, in addition to being Palm Sunday, it is also uh, the last day of the first round of the NCAA tournament. Um, for basketball. The North Carolina Tar Heels, uh, Brother Thomas, they did win, amen. Matter of fact, uh, amen, thank you, thank you, Antoine, amen. Matter of fact, I got my Carolina socks on right now, praise and celebrate the name of the Lord, we won. So here's the thing, uh, I understand that, what, oh, I understand, oh, and Brother Pace, Arizona plays today. But Arizona wouldn't be Arizona without Caleb Love, who came from North Carolina, but we'll talk about that another day. But nevertheless, uh, so the games are on, right? Here's the thing. Uh, I have a TV in my office. You're welcome to come by and check the score of the game out. Amen. Anytime you want to. Praise the name of the Lord. But I need you back here at 4 o'clock. Look at your neighbor and say, come back at 4. Don't get comfortable. We really want this man to shut up talking about this, so come back at four o'clock. Four o'clock this afternoon, I hope to see you all there. We're gonna have a great time, really, so please come on out and celebrate with us and uh, our elder and the senior bishop of African Methodism. Also, I wanna thank everybody who came out last week and participated in our informational session regarding General Conference and regarding the focused campaign. Uh, one of the reasons that our elder is coming here today and Bishop Richardson are coming here today to celebrate Palm Sunday, but the elder also wants to highlight uh, the fact that one of his pastors is running for bishop, that's me, uh, running for bishop in our church, and 
one of our other pastors, Reverend Dr. Cynthia McDonald, is running for historiographer of our church. So he wants to celebrate and highlight both of us on this day with the senior bishop. So again, we would love to have you here. And I want to thank everybody who came out last week for the informational session. Don't forget to keep an eye on everything going on in the church through uh, the announcements. The announcements go out every Saturday around 8 o'clock in the morning through Constant Contact. You can sign up uh, right from uh, our website if you desire. Or you can let us know and you can sign up that way. But that way you'll be on top of everything going on in the church and you know everything that's happening and you'll be informed about all that we are doing. So please make sure and sign up for Constant Contact and stay informed. And we thank you in advance for everything that you uh, continue to do. So now as we transition and move forward, come on, let's give God some praise. It's offering time as we celebrate the goodness of the Lord this day. We celebrate our time of giving on this Palm Sunday, the day that they celebrated and um, were jubilant about the coming of Jesus. And Jesus was entering into uh, the city of Jerusalem, marking the final, the culmination of his earthly ministry here. Today marks that day, and we are glad and we are joyful and we are overjoyed that we can celebrate the goodness of God. And one of the ways that we celebrate is through our giving. So on the screen, we have our various ways in which to give. God has asked that we would all be tithing members in God's church to give God 10% back from the 100% that God has given unto us. God has blessed us so much. It is our opportunity and our responsibility to give back to God that which belongs to God. So here we have our various ways in which we uh, express our giving here at Allen Temple. You see the word Vanco, that's done through our church website. It's uh, www.allentempleame.org. Uh, from Vanco, you'll see there a form on uh, the page and you'll be able to give uh, however you desire to give, you can give uh, whether you're tithe, whether you're offering, whether to a specific area, whatever you'd like to give, you can do so uh, on the website at Vanco. Also, you'll see Givelify, which can be done at givelify.com or can be done <clears throat> through um, various apps, whether Apple or Android, or can be done through the website as well. And you'll see that picture of your church and your pastor, and you'll know that you're in the right place for Givelify. You can text to give at 833-523-2053, 833-523-2053. You can give in person here at church. There's a giving station right in the rear uh, between um, or right to my left. It'll be to the left of the door uh, going out. It'll be to our left. You'll see the giving station. And there's one right outside of our nursery as well. Two giving stations here at church. Or you can mail in your gift at 232 Arnold Mill Road, Woodstock, Georgia, 30188. But during this season of Palm Sunday, and you know, Easter's coming up next week, um, one, one of our bishops, uh, Bishop Richard Franklin Norris, um, I remember him saying this. He said, you know, what happens on Easter is people are reluctant at Easter to give money to God because their Easter uh, offering is not in their pocket. It's on their body. We spend so much on clothes. Come on, let's be real for Easter. And so much on other things in Easter baskets and bunnies and chocolate and all that. And it's great. We're going to do all that stuff too. It's wonderful. It's great. But don't miss the opportunity to give God what belongs to God. And don't allow anything to let you shortchange God of that which belongs to God. And God says that 10%, that tithe, is God's no matter what season, no matter what time, no matter what's going on in our lives. And I guarantee us, when we give to God that which belongs to God, God does open up windows of heaven, God does pour out blessings, which we can't contain, and God allows them to run over, that we might be a blessing to someone else. So all across the church, come on, let's stand wherever we are, all across the church as we celebrate the goodness of God and our gifts this day. Take your gift and hold it high in the sky. Take your gift and hold it high in the skies. We celebrate the goodness of God and we look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and everlasting God, we thank you for these gifts that you have given to us. As we give them, Lord, we ask that you would bless them and multiply them, that you would distribute them in your kingdom. And in all that we do, we will be ever so careful to give you the honor, to give you the glory and give you the praise. Thank you, Lord, for that which you continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 
We will now be blessed uh, with another selection by our youth choir. Come on, let's give God some praise for these young persons coming out and blessing us today. And then we will go into the word of the Lord. Thank you so very much. Turn with me 
to our scripture for today, found in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to Mark. Mark the 11th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 7. Mark the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 7. It's on the screen. We're also giving persons the opportunity to uh, find it on their own as well. Mark 11, 1 through 7. And the word of the Lord. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. Uh, word of the Lord reads as such. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethage and Bethany on Mount of Olives, and Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them, and as soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here, and if anyone asks, what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs it, and we'll return it soon. So the disciples left and found the colt standing in the street tied outside the front door. As they were untying it, some bystanders demanded, what are you doing untying that colt? They said what Jesus told them to say, and they were permitted to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it, and he sat on it. Uh, let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, we thank you for this time you've given us again today. And as always, Lord, this is my prayer, even on this Palm Sunday, that you would completely decrease me and completely increase you so that on this day of celebration and jubilation and joy, that your people would see absolutely none of me, but see all of you, that you would receive the glory and the honor and that your name would be praised. In Jesus' most blessed name we pray, amen. For a few moments today, looking at Mark, the 11th chapter, first seven verses is our backdrop. I ask that we would consider this subject, a disciple's Palm Sunday experience. A disciple's Palm Sunday experience. Um, this week, I, I looked back and um, thought about it leading up to today and this Palm Sunday. And uh, for 27 years, I've been blessed to preach a Palm Sunday message um, on Palm Sunday. For 27 years, 27 times, and a few times I might have had a guest preacher, but of those 27 years, the vast majority, I got up on Palm Sunday to preach a, a Palm Sunday message. Um, and the thing about Palm Sunday, it's, it's, it's a great day, it's a day of celebration, it's a day of joy, it's a day of jubilation, but one of the things is, it doesn't change. 27 years is the same story. 27 years is the same, Jesus entering into uh, Jerusalem triumphantly, it is the same uh, people that loved him on Sunday, wanted to crucify him on Friday. It's, it's the same story about how uh, sometimes the crowds were different. Maybe it was a different set of crowds, uh, a crowd that wanted to kill Jesus on Friday, that praised him on Sunday. But nevertheless, if it was a different crowd, the ones on Friday uh, should have been, uh, at least uh, should have been rebuked by the ones who praised him on Sunday. So the story doesn't change. And it's a beautiful story. It's a wonderful story. Uh, it's the joy that you experience this day juxtaposed against the betrayal that Jesus would face later on in the week. We need to switch it out? You good? Okay. Uh, later on in the week, leading to his crucifixion on Good Friday. This week is about joy, it's about pain, it's about triumph, it's about disappointment. And, and it's witnessed by Jesus, but it's also witnessed by Jesus' disciples. And clearly, if this were a movie, if this were a play, if this were a drama of any kind, Jesus is the star of the show, clearly. Jesus is the one that everything revolves around. Jesus is the one that makes the show go. Jesus is the star. Jesus is the center. Uh, but the disciples play a role as his supporting cast. And while Palm Sunday was a day of celebration, beginning a difficult week for Jesus, I ask myself, I wonder what the disciples' experience on this Palm Sunday looked like. I can never fully grasp what the experience of Jesus was on this day because Jesus was coming to the fulfillment of his earthly ministry. Jesus was about to go into what would become 
an epic week that would ultimately lead in his crucifixion, in his death and resurrection that we're going to celebrate next week as Jesus comes to save us all. So I cannot even begin to imagine the experience that Jesus had this week, but I can a little bit understand the experience the disciples had. Um, because just as Jesus had an experience on Palm Sunday, so did the disciples. So in the text, uh, comes from the Gospel of Mark, and it outlines Jesus' ministry in Jerusalem, beginning with the triumphal entry. And Jesus and his disciples are approaching Jerusalem, and Jesus sends two disciples ahead of him. He tells them, go into the village, uh, and as you enter, you will see a young donkey that no one has ever ridden before, uh, with the colts next to it. And Jesus says, untie the donkey and bring it to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, simply tell them that the Lord needs it, and the Lord will return it soon. So the two disciples did as Jesus instructed them to do. And as they were untying the donkey, just as Jesus said, people asked them, what are you doing untying that donkey? And they told them what Jesus uh, told them to say, and they were permitted to take the donkey. And then they brought it to Jesus, threw their garments over it, and Jesus sat on it in preparation to ride into Jerusalem. Jesus was preparing again to enter the final stage of his ministry, earthly ministry, preparing to save each and every one of us as, as he would do on that glorious day that he rose from the dead as no one had ever done before. And, and we know that we are saved through the death and, and resurrection of Jesus. We are saved as he rises. But here's the question. We see the experience of Jesus and we, we can hardly understand it, but what's the experience of the disciples? What were they thinking as they followed Jesus? What were they experiencing as they followed Jesus, especially on this difficult day? Because everybody who follows Jesus should be, ought to be a disciple of Jesus because the word disciple simply means follower. It means believer, it means supporter. So if I'm gonna be a disciple of Jesus, I've got to follow, I've got to believe, and I've got to support Jesus in everything that I do. But just as those disciples on that Palm Sunday were following Jesus, what's our experience today on this Palm Sunday as we follow Jesus? Because I think if we take a closer look at this story, we'll see some parallels that, that are drawn between what the disciples then thousands of years ago experienced as they followed Jesus to what we thousands of years later experience on this same uh, Palm Sunday as we follow Jesus. So for a few minutes today, we're gonna to look at this 11th chapter of, of the Gospel of Mark and understand what the disciples' experience was, what our experience is on this Palm Sunday. Three distinct areas that the Bible breaks down uh, in this text about the experience of the disciples on this uh, Palm Sunday. Here's the first. First thing we have um, on this Palm Sunday, we have a disciple's perspective. First experience of the disciples is their perspective. Um, the Palm Sunday experience for the disciples begins with their perspective regarding this day. And, and if you wanna know, you know what the word perspective means. It basically is our attitude regarding something. Our perspective is how we choose to view or how we choose to see a thing. And everybody's perspective regarding an event can be different because inevitably you're going to have a different attitude about that event. So the disciples had been walking with Jesus for so long now, seeing Jesus do so many things, seeing Jesus heal so many people, never really seeing Jesus uh, do anything that he didn't say or, or that he, uh, they'd never seen Jesus not be able to do anything that he said he could do. They've always seen Jesus do it. So now they come to this Palm Sunday. It's a day of jubilation. It's a day of celebration. But it's also a day that Jesus has prepared them for because he's letting them know later on in the week it's not going to look like this. Imagine you've been following Jesus the whole time and your experience has been nothing but joy, nothing but greatness, nothing but jubilation. You've seen Jesus just, uh, uh, you've seen him mistreated from time to time, but for the most part, you've seen the lame walk again. You've seen the deaf hear. You've seen the blind uh, regain sight. You've seen demons flee in his presence. It's amazing, but now you're coming to the day where Jesus says, don't get it twisted. They're going to celebrate me today but they're going to kill me later on in the week. But on this day, the disciples' experience 
is shaped by their perspective regarding Palm Sunday. So in our text, uh, the 11th uh, chapter, we're looking at verses 1 and 2. Uh, it begins with Jesus and, and his disciples approaching Jerusalem. And the Bible says in, in those first two verses, it says they come to the towns of, of Bethage and Bethany when they're on the way to Jerusalem. And now Jesus begins to shape the perspective of the disciples. Um, in that second verse, he says, I want you to go into that village over there and, and find and untie a donkey that's never been ridden and I want you to bring it to me so I can ride it into Jerusalem. He says, uh, go into the village. As soon as you enter it, you're gonna see a young donkey that's tied up, never been ridden. Untie the donkey, set it free, but bring it to me. Now, I wonder what the perspective, I wonder what the attitude the disciples had uh, about what Jesus just asked them to do. Think about it for a minute. This is not a glamorous mission. You've been following Jesus the whole time. You've been walking with Jesus. You think you're special because you've been with Jesus. You've seen other people try to follow Jesus, but they hadn't been able to follow Jesus like you following Jesus. So you're waiting for Jesus to give you some ultimate gift and mission and test. You're waiting for Jesus to give you something that's going to blow your mind. What you want me to do, Jesus? Do you want me to go and, and deal with this person? Do you want me to go and prophesy to that person? What do you want me to do? And Jesus says to the disciples, all I want you to do is go untie that donkey. Now, if you've ever dealt with donkeys before, you know they're, they're, they're somewhat stubborn. You know, we say stubborn as a mule. They, they don't smell that good. It's, it's, it's not a glamorous job to do this, but Jesus tells them, I need you to go. I need you to untie it for me. What do you think they were thinking when Jesus asked them to do this? All he asked them to do was go and untie a donkey. Now, many of us know if Jesus did that for us, we'd have got real indignant. I know y'all quiet on me this morning, but come on. You've been with Jesus, you've been walking with Jesus, you've been rolling with Jesus, and the best thing you can do is to tell me to go untie some animal? I'm better than that. Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know you're dealing with Jesus? I've been following you this whole time. I can heal the sick. I can, I can do some of the things you've told me I'm going to be able to do even greater than you, and I'm ready to do greater than you, but all you got me doing is untying this smelly, donkey. Matter of fact, I'm not going to say the other word that we call donkey. I'm not going to say it today, but y'all know the other word. You want me untying this thing, that's the best you can do for me. So, so when Jesus asked them to do this, I can imagine their perspective could have been one. Their attitude could have been one of, of humiliation and frustration. They could have been indignant because simply this is not really a big thing to do. But here's what I love about this text. Regardless of their attitude, we, we didn't hear anything negative come from these disciples. All we saw them do was to do what Jesus asked them to do. And the reason I believe they did what Jesus asked them to do is the same reason we ought to do what Jesus asked us to do. I do what Jesus asked me to do even when it's small and even when it's just a, a thing that's not really a, a thing of glory, when it's just a little bitty task, I do it because I believe that God, through Jesus, knows more than I do. And if God knows more than me, if Jesus knows more than me, then whatever Jesus asks me to do has to be the most important thing going on that day, otherwise he wouldn't ask me to do it. So when Jesus asked them to do this, to untie this donkey, instead of giving Jesus a hard time, they understand and know that God would not have asked me to do this if God did not already have this specific mission in mind for me to do. And my perspective, my attitude couldn't be one and shouldn't be one where I think I'm too good to do something. But it's got to be an attitude that says, if God tells me to do it, God knows more than I do. I need to do what God says. So, so when Jesus asks us to do something, even when it's a small task, our attitude can't be one of, of, of being indignant, but instead our attitude has got to be one of willingness because Jesus knows more than we do. And when Jesus tells us to do something, we got to trust whatever it is he tells us to do. But how many times has Jesus asked us to do something that, that we simply don't understand and, and, and we didn't understand it uh, we didn't really want to do it, but we did it anyhow because we know that Jesus knows more than we do. Jesus tells the disciples to go and untie this donkey who just happens to be in the village that they are passing on the way to Jerusalem. 
Jesus led them through this village, Bethage and, and Bethany, about four miles from Jerusalem, led them this way, by this specific route, by this specific town, because Jesus understood before they even understood it, that there's a donkey in this town that I need to go where I need to go. I need you to set it free for me, and I'm taking you this way because it's a whole lot going on with this plan that you don't know about yet, but I'm leading you over here, and I simply need you to do what I need you to do. See, my sisters and brothers, if God is asking you to do something that seems like it doesn't make any sense or seems like it's too small for you to do, we've got to have the same perspective that the disciples had on Palm Sunday, understanding that whatever God asks me to do, I'm not only going to do it, but I'm going to do it with gladness, I'm going to do it with joy, and I'm going to do it with willingness because I believe and I understand that God would not have led me to the place God led me to if God didn't want me to do what he's asking asking me to do. On this Palm Sunday, a disciple's perspective has to be one of trust and willingness, regardless of the size of the task, to know I've got to do what God has called me to do. So as we deal with a disciple's perspective, second thing we deal with today, understanding the experience on Palm Sunday, we've also got to deal with a disciple's purpose. Uh, the disciples Palm Sunday experience begins with their perspective, but it continues understanding their purpose. So our perspective is our attitude regarding what Jesus tells us to do. And the purpose is our actual calling and, and fulfilling that thing which Jesus says we need to do. So I, my attitude, my perspective is my willingness to do it. And my purpose is the actual doing of the task that Jesus has assigned me to do. But in order to achieve my purpose, I've got to align my perspective with God's perspective. And maybe the reason many of us have not achieved the purpose that God has for us is because we've not first aligned our perspective with God's perspective. But when I begin to set my attitude up to where God would have it to be, that I can do the purpose that God has for me, understanding that if my attitude is right, it's not hard to do anything God asked me to do because once my attitude is willing, then I'm ready to go out and fulfill and achieve whatever it is God has for me. So look at the text again. Now we're at verses three and four. Uh, in, in, in verses one and two, he was setting them up, telling them they need to go and, and free this donkey from the village that he happened to lead them by. Now let's look at verses three and four. In verse three, uh, Jesus says to him, he says, now, when you go untie this donkey, and this is why I tell you, God knows more than we know, right? God knows more. Because look what Jesus says. He said, if anyone asks you, what are you doing? Just say the Lord needs it and the Lord's going to bring it back to you. If anybody asks you, what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs it and the Lord's going to bring it back. And so the two disciples left. They, they, they took on their purpose. They found the colt. They found the donkey. They found it standing in the street. They, they found it tied outside the front door. And they began to fulfill their purpose and untie that donkey. The purpose of the disciples was made clear by Jesus. Your purpose on this day at this time, not the overall grand scheme, not your purpose two weeks ago, not your purpose two weeks from now, but what I need you to do right now here today is simply this. Go untie that donkey that I need and don't let anybody stop you from doing it. Now the purpose that Jesus has for us is not much different than the purpose that Jesus had for the disciples that day. Our purpose is to do whatever it is that God wants us to do and don't let anybody or anything stop us from doing what God would have us to do. And Jesus said to the disciples, he said, look, you may run into problems when you're trying to untie that donkey, but don't worry about the problems you're going to run into. Because if anybody says anything to you about what you're doing, I've already fixed it and I've already made a way that regardless of what anybody says to you, you keep on doing what you're doing and you won't have a problem because I've already removed the obstacle before you even encounter the obstacle. Now, I may have to shout all by myself on this one, but let me tell you, somebody ought to get excited. This is why. Because whatever it is you're worried about, God has already taken that which you're worried about and moved it out of the way. Whatever it is that's 
bothering you, God has already said, just keep on pressing forward toward your purpose. I'm going to remove the obstacle and you just do what I called you to do. Well, God, I'm scared. Don't worry about fear. Just do what I call you to do. God, I'm unqualified. Don't worry about qualifications. Just do what I've called you to do. God, somebody might not like it. Who cares who likes or dislikes what I call you to do? God says what I call you to do it. Fulfill your purpose and I'm going to work everything else out on your behalf. And, and, and I love it because uh, the same is true for us. If somebody questions something that you're doing on behalf of Jesus, you ain't got to fuss with them. You don't have to argue with them. You don't have to stop what you're doing. All you have to do is trust that the purpose that God has for you is bigger than any problem somebody else can put in your path and you keep on doing what God has called you to do. If people don't understand it, keep on doing it anyhow. People don't agree with it, keep on doing it anyhow. People don't support it, keep on doing it anyhow. Because the purpose that you have is not a purpose that is set by a person, but it's a purpose that's set by God and God says, well, I've given you a purpose I'll always give you provision I'll make a way out of no way and, and I can't tell you every specific purpose that Jesus has for you but I can tell you this whatever purpose Jesus has for you it's ultimately going to lead to Jesus being able to do that which he needs to do and it's going to ultimately lead to Jesus being lifted up and people being drawn to Jesus simply because you've done what God told you to do. The donkey that the disciples untied might not seem like much, but it was upon this donkey that Jesus sat and, and rode with humility into Jerusalem. And that even as the people were exalting Jesus, Jesus didn't get caught up in all that. Jesus simply remained humble and knew that he was fulfilling the purpose God had for him just as the disciples fulfilled the purpose God had for them simply by untying the donkey in the first place. And right now Jesus might be telling you to do something and, and, and the purpose might, might not make sense. It, it, it might seem small. It might seem insignificant. But you do that which God called you to do. Fulfill your purpose through Christ Jesus. And just as Jesus told the disciples, if somebody tries to stop you, tell them this is what God has called me to do, the way God has called me to do it, and God will always make a way. So we know the perspective of the disciples and we know the purpose of the disciples. Well, the last thing we learn about today, we learn about a disciple's plan. We have a disciple's perspective and a disciple's purpose. So now what's a disciple's plan? Um, we've seen the perspective on Palm Sunday the attitude of the disciples as they do what God called them to do. Uh, we, we know the, the purpose, and the purpose is to simply go and fulfill that which Jesus says, regardless of the opposition you may face. But now, what's the plan as you do this? Everybody has to have a plan. It, it's important before you do something to have a plan. It's important before you do something to have an idea of how you're going to do it. So, so what's the disciples' plan? And, and I got some good news for you today. The disciples' plan is the easiest thing in the world because as a disciple, I've learned I don't really have a plan. I just follow God's plan. And the disciples' plan must be God's plan. But the reason many of us mess up in the planning is we try to plan stuff outside of God. We try to plan stuff away from God. We try to plan stuff without first consulting and listening to the voice of God. But God says if you're going to really follow a plan, you can never have your own plan. All you can do is follow my plan, but I guarantee you in all my years of living, I've never seen a plan better for me than the plan that God had already set out before me. So, in the text, one last time. Now we're at verses 5 through 7, the last few verses of this text for today. And, and the disciples now have gone into the town and they found the donkey. They've untied the donkey. They're preparing to bring the donkey to Jesus. Now look at verse 5. We could bring up verse 5 
Uh, thank you so much. So here's verse 5. They, they untied the donkey. As they were untying the donkey, the colt, the donkey together, some bystanders demanded, what are you doing untying that colt? Get your hands off that donkey. If I were a more provocative preacher, you know, which I'm not, Sister Crump, but if I'm more provocative preacher, I may preach a sermon titled, Get Your Hands Off That Blank, the other word for donkey, but I'm not going to say that because I'm not that kind of provocative preacher, Sister Crump, to do that. But nevertheless, praise God, Reverend Tammy, but nevertheless, they demanded, why do you have your hands on that thing that does not belong to you? They demanded, they said, you get your hands off of that. Why are you bothering that? Now, here's the thing about it. The donkey didn't belong to them. They had nothing to do with it. They just didn't want to see the disciples messing with something. You know, there's people like that in the world today. Be all up in your business when you're just trying to do what you got to do. And they say to you, why are you over there doing that? This ain't none of your business while I'm over here doing that. But people, even back then, are the same now. now. They said, keep it up there for me, please, y'all. Uh, thank you so much. It says, in, in that fifth verse, it says, what are you doing untying that coat? That, that ain't something you're supposed to be dealing with. But here's what they did. Now, many of us in this position, and I'm talking about myself, I'd have had something slick to say to them. I'd have said something smart. I, I, I might have said something along the lines of, well, your mama ain't mind me touching this donkey. I might have said something like that. I might have said something, I really, I, I might have said something that, that I shouldn't have said. Brother Pat, you know, I wouldn't have wanted to, but I might have just slipped up and said something I shouldn't have said. But the disciples didn't do that. They're better than me. Here's what the disciples said. When somebody demanded why they were doing something, watch this. Somebody demanded a reason or an explanation why the disciples were doing something that ain't have nothing to do with the one asking why you're doing it in the first place. The disciples did not complain or argue or fuss or cuss or get in indignant or begin to say anything bad Bible said the disciples simply said what Jesus had already told them to say and they were permitted to take it maybe we mess up because we're trying to argue with people who try to stop us from doing what God would have us to do when God says I don't want you to argue about what I'm trying to get you to do all I want you to do is use the words I've already given you God says if you simply trust the words I've already given you I'll let you know everything you need to say to all of your haters all of your detractors all of those people that stand in your way all of the demanders all of the Karens of the world come on somebody that simply try to stop you from doing what God would have you to do God says you ain't got to fuss you ain't got to cuss just use the words I gave you and everything that I need for you to have will be permitted is there anybody in here today that can shout with me right now because you understand there's some stuff right now God is permitting in your life that can't nobody take away can't nobody mess up can't nobody keep from you simply because you do what God told you to do come on let's stand so as I prayer to close here's the thing look, look, look at the disciples plan they ain't have no plan. Their plan was Jesus' plan. Because when it came down to it, they didn't use their words. And some of the disciples were great orators, some not so much. Some like Peter were fighters. Others were thinkers. Some were more introspective like John. But they didn't do all that. The Bible said when somebody demanded why they were bothering something, they simply said, Jesus told me it was okay. And the Bible doesn't tell us whether or not the people who demanded and the people who ultimately let them go on were believers in Jesus or not. But it says the power of the word of God was so strong, it didn't matter whether the one who heard it believed or not, they were gonna abide by it. The power of God's word is so strong, it brings into line believers and non-believers alike. For when you use the word of God as God desires us to do, and when you use the words that God has given you in the situations where God has placed you, 
and you understand that my plan is not my plan, but my plan is God's plan, God will give you everything you need to be successful. Stop, and this is for somebody today, and then I'm gonna let y'all go. Stop looking at yourself as inadequate. Stop looking at yourself as unqualified. Every single person God has ever called to do anything has been unqualified before God called them. There's never been a person who was qualified to do what God had before God called them. And God won't call you if God has not already begun the process to qualify you. But the qualification, we oftentimes look for it in ourselves. You're not going to find it there. But you've got to trust God enough and the plan of God to know that God would not call me to do something that God has not already begun the process to give me the ability to do. Stick to the plan that God gave you through Jesus. Trust the plan that God gave you through Jesus. When you encounter an obstacle, understand that obstacle, God already knew about it. Trust the plan. When you encounter a difficult person, God already knew about that difficult person. Trust the plan. When you encounter somebody that don't like you, don't go back with, I don't like you either. That's, that's childish. Don't do that. Trust the plan. Because here's the thing. There's nothing that God or will, there's nothing that will be placed in our path that tries to stop us. That God has not, not already created a plan to move out of our way. Just trust God's plan. So what's the disciples experience on Palm Sunday? What's your experience today? And I tell you, this is a difficult day for me because most of the 27 years I preached this text, most of the 27, uh, Sister Cousin will tell you she's been with me for 25 of those 27, most of the 27 years, I talk about the fact that I really struggle with Palm Sunday. Brother Richard, I struggle with Palm Sunday. I'm going to tell you why. I struggle with it because I know how much they love Jesus today, but they're going to hate him on Friday. I struggle with today because I know they love Jesus on a Sunday, but they can't stand him on a Friday. I love Jesus today because people love Reverend Cousin when he's doing what they want him to do. But the moment you do something different, oh, they don't like you no more. I, I struggle with Palm Sunday because the moment you're in line with your friends and you're doing all the stuff they want you to do, you're great, you're the best, you're you all that. But the moment you begin to do something different, the same ones that loved you on Sunday will crucify you on Friday. But I've learned over these 27 years that's part of the story. But the part of the story I'd rather focus on today is not what's going to happen on Friday. Focus on what God is telling me to do right now on Sunday. And right now God is telling me to tell you, get your perspective right. If God asks you to do something, have a willing attitude to do whatever God asks you to do. Understand your purpose. Now, I can't tell you the specific purpose God has for your life. God has not given me that insight. But you can, and all you have to do is ask. God said all you do is ask, and I'll tell you. But I can tell you the collective purpose God has. God's collective purpose is for us to go and make disciples. Our collective purpose, straight from the Bible, is what you see every week, is to teach, go, serve, and grow. That's the collective purpose. That's what God calls all of us to do, to go out and to lead others. Not to lead them away from church, but lead them to church. Not to lead them away from God, but lead them towards God. Not to lead them away from the salvation and the salvific power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but to lead them to that power that is able, able to make every head bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's our purpose. And so now we have to trust God's plan. When you go out and talk about Jesus, and not everybody's going to be excited about it. Some people are going to tell you to shut up. Matter of fact, we live in a world right now where, um, for lack of a better word, organized religion gets a bad rap. People love to say things like, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. People love to say, you know, Christianity is uh, for the oppressor and it's for the, the uh, whatever. Trust the plan of God. And the last time I checked, the word of God 
is not written for those who are doing the oppressing. The word of God speaks to those that have been oppressed. The word of God speaks to those that need to be delivered. And the word of God speaks to those who are tired of following their own plan and are ready to follow God's plan. Three questions I have for you today, and they're simply this. If you're ready to follow God's plan, first question I have for you is, have you been saved? And this is all salvation is, is confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus died and rose again for you, and you are saved. It doesn't take a whole lot of running around the church. It doesn't take a special this or a special that. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You gotta confess it, so you have to say it. And you really have to believe it. You have to believe it even when people say it's not true. You have to believe it even when people speak against you. You have to confess and believe. And when you do, God will meet you right where you are. Jesus will meet you right where you are. Hold out his hand and save you. So if you're one who desires to be saved, whether you're here with us today or whether you're watching us online, all you have to do is, come, is just say these words, and you could even use your own words, but these same sentiments, Lord, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died and rose again for me. We're going to celebrate that next week, that you died and rose again for me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Secondly, if you're one who has already been saved, we praise and celebrate the name of the Lord for you. But if you're one who desires a church home, a place where you can come and learn, a place where you can come and grow, a place where you can come and be where God would have you to be, we would love to have you here at Allen Temple. We offer Allen Temple to you. We're not a perfect church. We're far from a perfect church. We're not perfect people. We're far from perfect people. But last time I checked, we serve a perfect God. And the perfection that is in God, God allows us to see and to experience and even though we are not perfect, we find our perfection in our God through Christ Jesus. And we love for you to come and experience that with us. So if you're one who desires a church home, all you have to do is come down and meet me uh, in the middle right now. We'd love to have you. You can speak to us after church. You can speak to us at any given time. But don't let this opportunity pass that you don't take the time to come and be a part of where God has led you to be. And if this is not the church God has led you to be, we pray that God would let you find a place where you can grow and a place where you can be what God would have you to be. And lastly, if there are any that just desire a word of prayer for whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're dealing with, I ask that you, if you feel comfortable, would hold the person's hand next to you. If you feel so comfortable as to do so, if not, that's okay as well. Hold the person's hand next to you. As we look to the Lord in prayer together, gracious and everlasting God, we thank you for the words you've given us today, for the power of Christ Jesus you've given us today on this Palm Sunday as we experience what you would have us to experience on this day, that you would give us the right perspective, Lord. And the perspective is one of willingness. The perspective is one of an attitude where we do what you would have us to do. We thank you, Lord, for our purpose. And our purpose, Lord, while being individual and different as individuals, we thank you for the purposes you've given us collectively, which is to lift, magnify, elevate, exalt your holy name, and to fulfill that which you have called us to do, regardless of any obstacle or any problem we may have fulfilling it. And lastly, Lord, we thank you for our plan. But as you know, Lord, we don't have a plan apart from you. So right now, Lord, we ask that you would continue to outline your plan in our life. Continue to highlight your plan for our life. Continue to allow your will to be bigger than our will and for your will to take precedence. And as we fulfill your plan for us, Lord, we know that there's nothing that will stand in our way. And when something tries to, don't let us fuss, complain, or fight. But instead, Lord, let us realize all we have to do is use the words you've given us, the power you've given us through Christ Jesus, and everything will be all right. We ask that as we leave this place, you would make us stronger, you would make us better, and you would make us more willing to exalt, glorify, and magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise, my sisters and brothers. Thank you again for this opportunity. I pray, I pray again, please, that with all sincerity, I pray that I will see you uh, at 4 o'clock this afternoon. We will have a marvelous, marvelous time. I guarantee it. Um, look forward to seeing you today at 4 o'clock. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. people spread their cloaks on the ground and they began to wave their palms come on let's wave our palms they begin to wave their palms triumphantly and wave their palms with jubilation celebrating crying Hosanna glory to the highest the King of Kings the Lord of Lords our Messiah has come and now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible with all of us now henceforth and forevermore and all God's people said, Amen.